Hey, hey, what's up? Welcome to the latest edition of the Winner's Circle presented by Naira and Naira Bets, the official online betting partner of the Belmont Stakes and Saratoga Racecourse. And speaking of, we've made it. The kind of post-COVID Triple Crown is going to come to an end this weekend at Belmont Park. And we looks like, I mean, after the Preakness Day, it looked like, considering who was skipping the Preakness and who was probably coming back. And the list was long and the field felt deep. And I think where we've landed here is we're going to have a very strong field with a pretty good betting race in front of us on Saturday, I think. It feels that way. Uh, we've got, you know, the... Derby favorite in essential quality coming back. You had the Derby second choice in Rock Your World coming back. You've got the Preakness winner in Ron Bauer. Um, and then you've got a couple of other horses who have kind of been in the mix, who haven't quite broken through, but who've been waiting for this opportunity, given their pedigree, uh, given the way they've kind of come into the Belmont in terms of their preps. Um, I'm looking at a couple of them who may not necessarily be headline grabbers, who at the very least, I think, could fill out exactas in a race like the Belmont Stakes. I think it's an intriguing betting race, an intriguing handicapping race. We could dig into that in a little bit. I have a hard time right now, Monday, I have a very hard time thinking essential quality is losing. I don't know where you are on that, but I, I just, having not run in the Preakness, coming back, having the race that it had at the Derby with the trip that it had, I, I have a hard time buying it's not the best three-year-old and that he's going to win this weekend. I think you're exactly right. I think it's just, it's the trip in the Derby, right? The horse was five for five before the Derby. And then you look at the Derby. I think he covered something like 68 extra feet. So he covered about, I don't know, seven or eight extra lengths more than the horses that finished in front of him. Hot Rod Charlie, Mandaloon, uh, Medina Spirit. All those horses either hug the rail or were like too deep uh, at, at, in sort of their worst point during the race. And so when you have essential quality, getting jostled at the start, getting knocked sideways, being rushed up, being four wide the entire time around both turns. Um, and with the Tappet pedigree, not including last year, which of course was at the Belmont was running a mile and an eighth, in the years prior, three of the six winners of the Belmont Stakes were by Tappet. Um, it, it's a proven pedigree. It's not fluky. It's not just by chance. Uh, when you've got a tap it in the Belmont, you better, better pay attention to them. Even when they've underperformed in the lead up to the Belmont stakes with essential quality, you have a horse who's been at the top of his class going back to last year and he's got the pedigree and he's got the excuse coming out of the Derby. There's no knock on essential quality. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I think he should be probably will be a pretty good favorite, even though the field is relatively deep um, at some point later. I want to talk about hot rod Charlie again, because obviously it's, um, it's it's the pick that we want to win for a lot of reasons, and we'll we'll get into those reasons in a bit. But just as a contender in the race, purely as a handicapper, how do you look at Hot Rod Charlie this weekend? I think Hot Rod Charlie's race is really going to be determined by how aggressive a ride he gets. So Rock Your World figures to be the logical speed in this race, but is there some way that they can get Hot Rod Charlie to the lead? And uncontested, and can he set a slow pace? Because I think if Hot Rod Charlie has to chase the pace, even if the even if he's stalking or if he's you know too wide or you know just you know drifting behind the leader, that does not seem like a trip that will work for Hot Rod Charlie because he hasn't really won that way, and we've seen him kind of hit a wall late. Um, we saw it in the Derby. Uh, we saw it when he was up against Medina Spirit out in California when they were prepping out there. He doesn't really go by horses late, and we saw that happen in the Derby. So I think they've got to be aggressive with him. The problem is I'm not sure he has the pedigree if they go aggressive early, if they go fast early, to have enough late. So I think he, he's, he's a contender. He's in the mix. I just have a hard time at this moment envisioning a scenario in which he wins. Okay, and we'll get to the sentimental part of it later and why we're all going to be sitting there rooting for him. So I, I – like – that clouds the the primary decision of would you actually bet on him this race, which we'll get to in a little bit. All right, Note Agenda, who I loved going into the Derby, then got a really bad draw. What do you think of Note Agenda coming back after skipping the Preakness? I like Note Agenda a lot. You you saw with Ron Bauer in the Preakness, didn't race in the Derby, the benefit of coming in fresh. He got a great setup in that race, was able to roll by those horses late, Midnight Bourbon and Medina Spirit. 
now you've got a horse like Known Agenda, who's one of the fresher horses coming in off of, um, you know, the break from the Derby, obviously was eliminated essentially from the gate, got shuffled back early, made a nice little move. But if you watch the replay of the Derby, he did have to stop a few times as tired horses were kind of backing up into him. I think Known Agenda makes sense, again, as sort of a trip play coming out of the prior race. We saw what he could do when he gets some clear running and he gets a set up the way he did in the Florida Derby. And then he's also got the pedigree. He's a Curlin, and Curlins are one of the pedigrees that you look for. The Belmont Stakes, unlike the other uh, races where, I mean, look, pedigree is certainly a factor in the Derby, uh, maybe slightly less so in the Preakness. But you could kind of look at accomplishment to date. You could kind of look at, 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 at race shape, at pace dynamics. With the Belmont, I don't want to say all that goes out the window, but I feel like pedigree trumps a lot of those other variables, and you have to have that one variable. And so known agenda for me is a horse who has that, plus I think he's the goods based on, on his recent performances. Yeah, I do too. Uh, the 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 one, the inexplicable clunker of the Derby was Rock Your World. So you buying back in with Rock Your World this time? <laughs> Uh, I, I'm on the fence with Rock Your World. Um, I think, you know, like I said, the pace is going to is going to really determine everything. Like if he gets out to a loose lead, if Hot Rod Charlie doesn't go with him and he could slow things down on the front, we saw what could happen when Rock Your World's on the lead. And obviously he had excuses coming out of the Derby too, except with Rock Your World, you could make a better case that his Santa Anita Derby win was a bit more fluky than some of these other horses' performances who have a little bit more form before then. With him, that was his first dirt race, and he absolutely, like, coasted. Coming back in the Derby, I know he had excuses at the start, but, you know, like, he also really – I mean, everyone has excuses in the Derby. And I – you know, he could certainly take that next step forward, um, but if – you'd have a hard time convincing me. I think at this moment that he's a better horse than essential quality, just based on even what I saw in the Derby, but even prior to the Derby, he just doesn't have quite the resume. And so I don't know, I have a few more questions about him than I would with a horse like essential quality. And if you're telling me he's going to be second choice, he's going to be, you know, three to one or something that wouldn't excite me. Yeah. That wouldn't excite me either. All right, let's get into Ron Bauer here. Uh, won the Preakness. If you hindsight's, Wonderful. You get to go back and look and go, you know what? He kept getting better and better and better, but his best didn't look good enough for what he did, which is where I landed on him. And that's why I did not really pay a tremendous amount of attention to him. And clearly I was wrong. And a lot of people were wrong about him. Do you think there's another step up though? Because I, I don't, and maybe fool me twice and I'm an idiot, but I don't see it this weekend. I, I don't see it either. Uh, the Preakness field was not the field that he's going to see here in the Belmont stakes. I think we knew going in that Preakness was was a touch soft. Um, we knew that it, if there if there was any scenario that that would set up for a horse like him, it would be exactly the one that played out. In which you know you had uh, Midnight Bourbon pressing Medina Spirit, who was coming off of a career effort. Those two horses obviously did not have. Well, I mean Midnight Bourbon ran on really well, so I'm not taking anything away from him. Running by Medina Spirit after taking all that pressure. Going by Midnight Bourbon, yes, that's great. Midnight Bourbon finished, what, sixth or seventh in the Derby. You have the third and fourth place finishers from the Derby returning here. Um, so, I mean, I think, you know, quite clearly, Hot Rod Charlie and Essential Quality have proven better horses than anything he beat in the Preakness. Um, and does he have another step forward in him? Maybe he does, but that was a pretty huge effort a couple of weeks back. So asking him to turn back around after not ever running like that and do it again. Three weeks later, I think that's asking a lot. Yeah, I think it is too. All right. Those are the group of horses that I think will win. You probably disagree because I know you like to live on the edge. So of Rebels Romance, Borbonic, Keep Me In Mind, Overtook, and the Japanese horse, Francisco de Ina, or Ina, I don't even know what it is. Who do you like? I know there's one of them. Who is it? Who do you like? You know you know me too well, man. You know me too well. It's It's Overtook. Um, <laughs> it's absolutely over to mention pedigree being a big factor. He's a curling. Um, and you know, he's got, I think now enough of a foundation to, to make this next move. I think if you're looking for a horse who can take that next step forward for me, it's overtook, uh, in the Peter Pan last out. Um, you know, and we could talk about this in a moment too. I know we're going to like look at a race in a little bit where small fields 
weird things happen when there's no race shape and and when when there's no pace that develops weird things can happen and horses sometimes that are closers in particular don't run to, to their maximum ability i thought that's what happened there didn't really have much of a pace to run into did his usual sort of plodding along late and got up for third um but if you look at the way he runs look at the way he gallops out um in some of these races i think he's going to love every bit of a mile and a half if that pace does really heat up up front, I think he's a win contender, especially mm. if essential quality is close to that pace. If it's not that hot and if essential quality gets the trip that I envision him getting sitting off the pace, I like an essential quality overtook exacta. Okay. I don't like any of them. All right. I'm just going to say that out loud right now. I'll probably end up being wrong, but I don't like any of them. And we'll see when we get there. And I guess – for Bonnet getting the outside gate at the Kentucky Derby kind of ended what I thought was a realistic possibility of doing anything. And he won the Wood Memorial and he did it in such a ridiculous way that I guess that I'm willing to look at him a little bit. Str- I'm giving a second look at him to not have him be my Rombauer three weeks later. So I'm going to look at him one more time, but I do feel like the winner is of that upper crust quality, essential quality, known agenda, Hot Rod Charlie, one of them is winning. That's Rock Your World, maybe, if he bounces back. I think one of them is winning. I'm going to have a hard time buying that one in that group is coming out of it this time. Don't don't look too long at Burbonic. Please okay. don't. There's no need. There's no need. We can cut him some slack for, for the wide post. Uh, you know, he had to navigate through traffic late in the Derby, this, that, and the other thing. His win, even though I, I you know, I like the way he won the Wood Memorial – now, with the benefit of, you know, sort of perspective and time, I've seen the horses who've come out of that Wood Memorial. Dynamic one did nothing in the Derby. Uh, crowded trade, risk-taking, those horses absolutely bombed in the Preakness. What more do you have to see? I mean, he didn't beat much in that race. And that's the race that you, you have to hope that he can at least go back to and run a similar race. Even if he runs that race, I'm not convinced that's better than fifth here. Fine. Okay. Right. So we'll let it be. All right. I'll make you make a pick it a little bit, but first I bet your favorite tracks online with Naira bets available nationwide in 30 States. Naira bets offers best in class HD live video and replays online contests to compete with other Naira, Naira bets players, exclusive promotions that give back more and expert picks and analysis with an easy to download app. Betting horse racing online has never been easier and safer. Sign up for Naira bets now to earn $200 in a sign up bonus with promo code ABR 200. And welcome back to the Winner's Circle. I'm Bram Weinstein with Dan Torgman, presented by Naira and Naira Betts. All right, look, before I show this, you sent me a clip that I want to show from a baseball game, which was like, wow, sports is back and everybody's interacting really nicely. Um, that's not been the week that we've had. Uh, let's see. We had some dude uh, get kicked out of the garden last night because he threw a bottle at Kyrie Irving. We uh, had down here, we had Russell Westbrook have popcorn dumped on him by some idiot up in Philadelphia. Some guy at the Knicks game uh, spit at Trey Young, had to be removed, and um, they're taking tickets away and in some cases arresting him and they're bringing their, you know, they're, they're putting their, their hands down on everything. And there's been other incidents here, even at the PGA Championship. I mean, while it didn't get rowdy or weird, the enveloping of Phil Mickelson, Brooks Kepka by the crowd at the PGA Championship, it's almost like, We've been inside too long. Nobody remembers how to act in public or act with one another or realize you can't do the things that they're doing. Um, where are you on stadium violence? Because it's been really nuts here since things have kind of really reopened. I think that's exactly right. I, I think that, that it is concerning. Um, I have actually been um, to about, I think, six Mets games now um, since things started opening up a bit. Um, now, a couple of them were doubleheaders. So just in case you're worried about me going to six Mets games. Um, and I've been conscious of it, to be honest. Like I've seen a few people just who you who appear drunk to me. And I've like consciously been like, I'm staying away from these people. Like, yeah, I, I don't even know. It's, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, revenge of the body snatchers or something. Like, I don't even know who these people are. Like, I, I don't know what they're capable of. Haven't seen them in a while. Don't want to predict their behavior, but I'm going to assume the worst. And we've seen a lot of sketchy behavior. You mentioned the fans spitting on Trey Young. I'm a Knicks fan. Not proud of, like, the chance at, at the stadium either. Like, I mean, you got to do better. I don't mind the Trey Young's balding. I mean, I actually well, – That one I like. Yeah, that's that one's fun. That's, 
that's yeah. creative. That's funny. I don't like the other chant. Yeah, you know, yeah, it, I agree. It's stupid. It's stupid. It's immature, and it's just it's not good. I mean, there they're, first of all, there are kids there. There are kids watching at home, and even if it's not kids, it's like it's it's just childish and dumb and not witty and just not in 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 the spirit of like what this is all about. It's about you know rooting for your team and yeah, heckle, heckle the, the other guy, you know, but you know, be measured, you know, like, I mean, there are lines you don't cross. And I think using some of the language the fans have been using without any, you know, you know, and, and it's not just one person, it's an entire arena chanting it. And then also, you know, the obvious throwing things or spitting, it's like, give me a break. I mean, yeah. well, let me ask you this though. Let me ask you this. Cause we've all been inside for a while. Um, so you've been going to games in New York a very long time. Is this this unusual that people act oddly at sporting events? Like, I think it's a big deal, too. And I'm glad people are making a big deal of it. And the teams are looking down on these idiots that are doing stupid things like this. And there's never a reason to spit at, chuck something at one of the players. It's ridiculous. Like, I, I, I'm all, but I've been going to sporting events my entire life and there's been a fight at every single one of them almost without <laughs> fail at a major sporting event. Like, I, so I, 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 there's part of me going, did we forget that this happens all the time at these things? Right. I think there's probably an element of, yeah, like we forgot how rowdy fans got, but, but I think, I think we're seeing something on a different level now. I still think we're seeing something that really ref reflects to me a degree of like insulation that that now once people are outside like they have completely lost all concept of like repercussions and 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 you know like like that if they do something like curse or throw something you know th that's generally not only frowned upon but that could also get you in trouble that that could that could hurt someone else you know like and i think because we have been inside i i think we we've just quite frankly like like you, you summed it up perfectly. We've forgot, forgotten how to behave. And like, yeah, there will always be the occasional, you know, couple of drunk dudes, you know, getting into a fist fight. I mean, that, that right. happens, but. Or being a no jerk to the guy wearing a jersey of the other team in the stadium. It's like, yeah. settle down, man. Like, get yeah, along. It's, like, it's, get it's, along. I think they're going too far, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I agree that it is because it's widespread. Like, I read something the two major airlines are shutting down selling alcohol to people on their flights um, for like a month and a half, two months, because the amount of passenger violence has yeah. gone up on planes to a degree that they feel like it's unsafe. And there was always a part of me that went, I don't know the people who want to get drunk on the plane anyway, because you're like up in the air. Who wants to go to the bathroom in that horrible <laughs> urine, you know, that horrible toilet situation <laughs> stuck between somebody? You're just surly. Like, why do you want to be drunk there? But I get it. Like people do. And I, I don't know. I don't, I don't I, know. I, like, I, I just if an airline is to shut down alcohol sales after a pandemic where they lost, I don't know, billions of dollars because travel was completely down. Um yeah. Like, where are we? You know, like, like everybody, have you forgotten how to interact with one another? Like, what's wrong with you people? I think the common thread is like this feeling of entitlement that everyone has now. Like, I have been so aggrieved. I've had to be indoors. I've had to like, you know, like, oh, you know, like whatever it is. And now, oh, I'm outside. I want to do what I want to do. I want to drink. I want to talk, you know, you know, I want, I want to do everything. And it's like, no, you live, you're part of a society. Everyone yeah. else has had challenges over the past year and a half. You don't, this isn't just you. And I think that's the common thread in all this. It's not Lord of the Flies. We're not here to eat <laughs> each other now. Okay. And that's the thing. Over. People are actually enjoying like this. this it's, 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 and it's mind blowing. So, and I think that also, I think during COVID, we've seen, we saw people, and again, I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent here, reveal themselves and their decisions yeah. about mask wearing and, sure. and whatever else it might be. I'll, I'll just stop there. They reveal themselves. And I think those people are still revealing themselves. Those people are still saying, you know what? I have had it harder than anyone else. I don't care about anyone else. Don't, you know, get in my way. It, it's my world. This is how I'm going to do it. So we're just seeing people reveal themselves as they did throughout the past year. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I agree. All right, here's an important question for you. Um, with the Heat and Knicks done, the Knicks are completely done. What bandwagon is Dan jumping on? Oh man, you know, so Stephanie actually, uh, we were going back and forth this week. So she's rooting for you know, she's a Hawks fan, and um, 
you know, and I and I knew Friday night in the second quarter, I was like, this this series is over. Like, you know, I thought they'd made some adjustments at the end of you know game two, where I think you know all right, maybe the Knicks will steady. They figure this out, but they're just they're not passing the ball. They're not doing anything. So so the Knicks are done. And I told I told her Friday night. I said they're done. Obviously, I watched a little bit of the game yesterday. I was like, they're done. Um, I mean, as some people know, like the Heat, the Heat, the Heat were a team that I was like really high on last year, and also coming to the playoffs this year, I thought they'd show a lot more. They showed up with absolutely nothing. Um, in terms of teams who I'd like to see win, I wouldn't mind seeing the Blazers win. I think at this point, the Blazers I like game two. I want to see that yeah. dude win. I like that dude. Like, I, yeah. he's a he is a tough tough playoff performer like clearly he does not have all these superstars around him i do i'm with you i want to see that guy win i like him yeah and for me like also you know i'm a cuse guy mellow I, I mean it's like his last i mean for me at least i think it's probably his last hurrah or pretty close to his last hurrah he's nailing shots left and right i mean he's, he's playing as well as he ever has at least in terms of how he's shooting the ball um i i wouldn't mind seeing them win um look out of the east I, i'm from brooklyn i don't want to see the nets win i mean i don't want to see a team that 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 was just completely bought and assembled yeah. over the past year and a half win um you know i i, I don't the sixers i sixers don't excite me i mean i, I so yeah i don't know i guess I'd, I'd go i'd go blazers all right uh since we started the segment with all the people acting like crazy let's end with a nice little piece of video from a giants dodgers game here major major rivalry giants dodgers game check out this dan set this said i think john boy had it up there he's like uh, the citizen journalist of baseball um so uh who was that that's one of the yastrzemski kids right yeah, Mike, who, gave Mike that, yeah, who gave that to this kid and then Kid's clearly a player. Like, check him out. He's like, what am I going to do with this thing? And whoa, look at that move. How about that move? <laughs> Is he wearing skinny jeans, by the way? Yeah, and you know what? I've been told those are out in 2021, even though I have a I have a theory on that. But yes, he is. Yeah, just su such a cute move there. I mean, just, you know, I, I, my favorite part is the whispering to the mom, like, hey, mom, I'm going to I'm going to give this ball to, to the girl next to me. And and the mom's like, all right, go for it. See what happens. And uh, and then and also like when she tries to give the ball back to him, I don't know if you saw if she tries. She's like, no, 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 no. You like, you, you could keep your ball. He kind of like nudges her away with the glove. Do you see that part? It's yeah. Like, really, really good. So. Uh, show the video one more time because there's just two parts to this that are that, uh, <laughs> that are important to me. All right. The woman he gives the ball to, is she famous? Because she looks really familiar to me. I, I can't place her. She does. She does have a celebrity look to her. Yeah. And then the guy next to her, is that your brother? Like her boyfriend? <laughs> because he's pulling a full Dan Torchman look with the hat and the glasses and the beard, the whole thing. Yeah, I, I I have looked like that playing poker before. I could I could tell you that. Yeah, I, that's yeah. definitely my poker look. Yeah. All right. So we get no answers. But it was <laughs> nice to end on that after this whole week of who spit on what, who threw what at who, what idiot wearing a Garnett jersey is now throwing stuff at people <laughs> like just moronic. All right, we'll make a pick in the Belmont next. But first, watch this. No sport in the world brings the wins home like racing. It's one-of-a-kind, high-speed, high-stakes action, and Naira Bets takes you there. Place your bets and watch the races live from anywhere. With Naira Bets, make easy, secure deposits and promotions every day to earn reward points or cash. Download the Naira Bets app or visit NairaBets.com. Welcome back to the Winter Circle. I'm Bram Weinstein with Dan Torgman. All right. Uh, before we get to a pick for the Belmont for this weekend, we have a live stream tonight uh, profiling the Shoemaker Mile from Santa Anita, which is the first win and in race of the spring summer as we head towards the Breeders' Cup. So uh, what do you want to give for a preview tonight from Santa Anita? Yeah, it should be a really fun show. Um, we've got three races. One of them is at Shoemaker Mile. We're going to kick the show off at around 7 o'clock Eastern, uh, 4 o'clock for the folks out West. Um, and then that's followed up by two really good grade one races, the Hollywood Gold Cup and the Gamely. Uh, so it's just great betting all day long. Um, you know, there's racing coast to coast. And so we'll kind of bring it home tonight with, uh, with the show that will stream on ABR's Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. You could also catch it on Santa Anita's Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. It's uh, Road to the Breeders' Cup live from Santa Anita. 
Really excited. We'll be hosting uh, along with Matt Bernier from NBC Sports, whom you all know, and Ren Carruthers uh, with the Breeders' Cup Future Stars Friday. Also, Tampa Bay Downs analyst. She'll be there. And then we'll have a couple of guests joining us from Santa Anita. So tune in tonight, 7 o'clock. All right. So I, from the expect anything to happen file came this from Santa Anita over the weekend, which was the Charles Whittingham Stakes. There was four horses in the field. One of them's United, the other is Red King, and neither of them win. So check out check out the stretch run from the Charles Whittingham from over the weekend. Number eight, still doing it well. Two length advantage award winner gets his cue. United pushed along from third. Now he's asked for more. Red King at the rail, top of the stretch, and Acclimate still strong on the front end. Award winner, United not really firing, passed by Red King, a 16th to go, and award winner is overhauling Acclimate. Acclimate fights back, but award winner has the edge close to home, and it's award winner and Juan Hernandez to win the Charlie Whittingham. So here's the rare four-horse field, massive favorite no-shows, second choice on the board, way too late making a run towards the top two you don't see this very often in a, in a race that matters like this a stakes race so i guess we'll see what happens tonight then right we'll see what happens <laughs> yeah with these small like i said when, whenever it's a small field i'm always inclined to be like you give the horse a pass obviously and they're also dangerous betting races because if you're playing the multi-race sequences you're like oh okay like this one's pretty obvious, right? I mean, this horse is the class of the field, towers over them. A lot of times, class goes out the window, especially in small fields, and, and pace will take over as, as the dominating factor that you got to look at. Looks like they went pretty slow early. Um, I didn't watch that whole race. I, I couldn't tell you how slow they went early, but um, it looked like they were, they were all pretty much running about the same way late. Um, and so I don't know. I, like, I, you know it, it happens. And, and also in prepping, I mentioned overtook. And why I like him a little bit, looking at that Peter Pan stakes, small field, nothing really happened. And, you know, the two horses closest to the front ended up winning. And so that often happens when you have small fields. All right. Two quick stories and I'll make you make a Belmont pick. All right. Uh, Monday Belmont pick. We won't hold you to it, right? Six days in advance. Not fair. All right. How about this one? There is an owner willing to pay thousands of dollars and fight in court the fact that he's not currently allowed to name his horse Bad Test Bob, which is a clear tweak at Bob Baffert, who is not running any of his horses this weekend because Naira has not lifted any ban on him running at Belmont Park. So none of his horses will be in the Belmont field at this point. And as far as I know, the second test has not been administered yet on Medina Spirit. So we have no real ending to the drama of is the Kentucky Derby legitimate or not? We haven't had that one yet. But right now, there is a group that is saying, you can't make this the name. And there's part of me that goes, why? 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 Because you don't want to perpet because you don't want to perpetuate it. Because you don't think it's good for the sport to perpetuate it. Like, it's not a curse word. It's not pornography. He is taking a shot at him. Um, why are we saying no to that? Why can't he do it? Well, because there's no, like, First Amendment protection built into to, to the name naming process in horse racing <laughs> there's no like you know you don't just get to name a horse anything you want i mean that's the way it is that the jockey club runs the registry there are rules there are limitations on letters the number of letters you could have um and there are also limitations on how like you know edgy you can be and how inflammatory you could be you allow something like that i mean you know what's the logical progression of where it goes from there i mean in terms of Right. What's next? That are That's gonna, true. Yeah. What's next? Then it be, then right. Horse racing becomes the WWE, which is I think what they're not trying to do. Right. They're trying not to do that. Even though I don't know if you saw this, Urban Meyer was on a WWE show last night, and there were like fights in his office. You saw really? That? See that? No, yeah. I didn't. Where's that? It's clip? worth checking out on Twitter. You know, <laughs> you need to you need to kill a couple <laughs> minutes on Memorial Day. There you go. There you go. Check it out. Um, all right. Uh, before we get to a pick, last thing, I'm going to have money on Hot Rod Charlie. I'm going to be rooting for Hot Rod Charlie. Um, as as anyone who's followed what we do here at America's Best Res Racing, you know that there is a direct link to Hot Rod Charlie's connections and Stephen Panis, um, who we work with at ABR and is the head of media at the America's Best Racing and the Jockey Club. And his son tragically died um, last year in a car accident. And this group has been working with him to raise money. Uh, on behalf of his legacy in many different ways. So I don't know if there's anything else you want to share about Hot Rod Charlie, but clearly 
I'm going to be rooting for him. I may not pick him, but he'll be in every one of my bets, and I certainly will be rooting for him this Saturday. Yeah, the whole boat racing team, uh, the ownership group for Hot Rod Charlie, uh, pretty incredible. Not only uh, have they, you know, decided that Hot Rod in the Derby and now in the Belmont will be racing for Jake Stevens' son, uh, but you know they're also uh, donating or, or, or promising to donate a portion of earnings to uh, melanoma research. Uh, they they've all been, you know, I, I think several members of the, of the group there have been impacted by it directly. Patrick O'Neill, I believe his. His father passed away at a pretty young age from melanoma. So um, j- just a really easy team to root for. Um, on top of it, they're younger guys who are in their late 20s and they're in racing and they they make it look fun and cool. And so that's something that, you know, I think racing could always use more of. So there's that as well. So, yeah, I mean, I think it would be great for racing and it would be a great story if they won. Um, and look, we'll see. It, it, it's a horse race. You, you never know. I mean, essential quality, I think, is going to be super tough. But, you know, if essential quality um, is off, then, you know, who knows? I, I think I think it's a, it, it, it could be wide open. At this juncture, I'll make it easy. I'm taking it. Oh, here's, the, here's Urban Meyer. Check this out. It's from Raleigh. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I miss yeah. wrestling. And it looks like it's in his office in Jacksonville. Like it looks like what? it is down. There. What the? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. That's you know, for pure entertainment, really. You know, yeah. not that I follow it that much, but I appreciate the level of entertainment quality that they bring. That's they that's the next thing we're gonna see in NBA arenas. Like once they run out of things to throw Might onto well. the court, Might start hitting well. people with their laptops. Um, all right. Uh, I'll make it easy. I'm taking essential quality. I, I mean, I may change my mind by the end of the week, but I got a hard time. I think he was best horse coming into the Derby. The fact that he didn't run in the Preakness, um, the way he ran in the Derby, you know, I, again, to your point earlier, if you rewatch, you'll see like the route he took to try to get to the finish line was not the route everyone else took to get to the finish line. Uh, that's not going to be the case this weekend. Uh, if he's firing, I got a hard time seeing him lose. So that's who I got. Yeah, I think betting essential quality straight up is, isn't going to be a fun thing to do. Um, certainly not going to make a lot of money unless you bet a whole lot of money. So um, a straight win bet uh, doesn't really do much for me personally. So I'll be looking to pair them up in exactas and maybe even like a straight trifecta or two with Overtook, who I think will be a really good price and who will get overlooked. And if there's one horse that I'm going to you know, mess around with a little bit one more time, one more time to at least hit the board finally, it'll be keep me in mind. I mean, the horse cannot break from a gate. I mean, I, I don't know what they're doing. Like, if it's, like, too late to do more gate schooling with him, if that doesn't matter, the horse does not leave the gate. He, like, refuses to leave until the field's about 10 lanes ahead of him. And so if if he could leave, let's say, within 10 seconds of the gate opening this time, given the mile-and-a-half distance, I think this would be the race where he could potentially not be hurt as badly by his, by his poor breaking. So um, I think keep me in mind, always runs a race. He might just be a cut below these. I don't think he's a win contender by any stretch of the imagination, but I think you're going to have a lot of these backing up late and keep me in mind, I think we'll be at least moving forward late, if not necessarily gaining on the likes of essential quality. So you're not, you will not for the record say overtook is your pick at this point. Um, I can't make overtook my pick, uh, in, 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 in you just good- like him in your exotics. You think he's going to hit the board. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, essential quality. I could see essential quality winning this race by, by four or five lengths. I mean, I could uh, see it. Maybe I, I think if known agendas on his game, I think we've got a pretty relative close race. That's what yeah, well, yeah. Look, no, and known agendas one that I haven't really spoken about too much here. I, I, I don't know why at this moment I'm like not talking more about no agenda, right? I mean, there's not really any knock on him um, unless you want to say that what he beat in the Florida Derby wasn't great. Talk about the Florida prepper soup and sandwich. Um, obviously didn't, didn't do much in the Derby. Um, you know, greatest honor we, we haven't you know seen since then. Uh, so, you know, I think that's pretty much the only knock on him. He's got the pedigree. Yeah, I, I think known agenda is there is there late. So yeah, like I said, I, I mean, I, I think overtook for me is a logical sort of value horse that you could pair up with with an essential quality. Um, but but I do think on his best day with the right trip, 
essential quality towers over the field. Yeah, I agree. All right. I'll see you tonight on the internets for, uh, I'll make a, a pop by for your uh, shoemaker vile show. And then I will see you in person. How about that? Wow. Three weeks. Wow. Two triple crowd races. I see you in person. I can't believe it. Wow. We're, we're getting back to normal again. I can't believe it. I'll be up in Belmont this weekend. I'm excited. Yep. Uh, looking forward to it, man. Looking forward to tonight. And then Saturday, even better in person. All right. Uh, as always, we're presented by America's Day at the Races, the official live broadcast partner of Aqueduct Racetrack, Belmont Park, Saratoga Racecourse, and Tracks Nationwide. For Dan, I'm Bram. This has been the Winner's Circle. We'll see you tonight. <laughs>